Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're going to take a look at how to make your laptop a little bit faster. Interested? Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video, we're going to take a look at how to make your laptop a little bit faster. Now, most laptops these days, especially AMD Ryzen based ones, are pretty much locked down. So you go into the BIOS, and there's basically nothing there you can do it's kind of a locked ecosystem. And due to the fact that so many manufacturers make their own custom motherboards with different ratings for VRMs and generally have relatively poor or lackluster cooling configurations, then yeah, overclocking is one of those things that basically can't be done. Lockdown BIOS, lockdown system, it basically is what it is. So what we've been needing is something to actually go in and actually tweak those settings a little bit that we've been previously locked out of. So there's a really cool program called Ryzen Controller, which is actually kind of like a, a fork of uh, another Ryzen configuration utility. We're gonna take a look at it today, show you where to download it from, take a look at the program itself, take a look at the GUI so you can see how it all works. Now this is actually with a Hewlett Packard uh, HP 245G8 model with a Ryzen 5500U. It does actually run pretty well out of the box, but it kind of worried me, or not really worried me, but. It, I wanted to see if it could do more. I, I felt in my heart that it could, and uh, yeah, actually with this program we can. So we're gonna go through today, take a look at it, see how it all works. Obviously, if you've got a slightly different laptop, then you may need to dial in different settings yourself. Uh, there's actually a really cool community attached to this particular project, so you can go and ask questions, all that kind of stuff. And because it's got a GUI, it's very easy to configure, and if things do go a little bit pear-shaped, you can just reset it back to defaults, which is awesome. So anyway, let's get on with it and we'll take a look. So this is the website of ryzencontroller.com uh, basically tells you about Ryzen Controller. I'll put links to this in the video description so you can just click on it. As it says there, they've got a Discord server and uh, yeah, there's a Patreon and GitLab if you want to help contribute, all that kind of stuff. And they do say thanks to Flygoat and his amazing work on Ryzen Adjuster, which is kind of like a different version of this. This is a more GUI interface. Uh, they've got downloads, tells you how to install it, etc. It's very easy to do so you can use it do it on Windows 10, Windows 11, and there are versions for Linux as well, or instructions on how to do that. And it talks about the configuration, so basically goes into how this works and why it works, all that kind of usual stuff. So you've got the six main things here, which is what we can control. So you've got your CPU TDP, long boost TDP, short boost TDP, temperature limit, long boost period, and your short burst period. Uh, anyway, we'll take a look at that when we look at the application. So let's minimize that down. And I've already installed this, just uh, make things a little bit quicker. So if we open up this, you see Ryzen controller. So it does require to be set up as admin, but this is basically the GUI. There's not really a great deal going on here. Uh, there's also options. So if you want to change it light to dark mode, whatever you want to do, uh, languages also ask for help, or you can contribute there. So you've got some tabs at the top here. So you've got CPU, you've also got GPU, power, Status, so that is the current status of the system, gives you the core temperature and also how much your package power is. You've also got your presets, so if you've actually saved any presets, you can do that from here, change them, apply them, delete them, all that kind of stuff. Or you can download online presets, should you wish to, or there's an auto apply preset section here, so you can say when it works and when it doesn't, so if it's on battery, it won't work, etc., etc. You get the general idea. You've got settings there, so you can have it so it launches on the computer start. You can launch uh, Ryzen controller minimized, and also you can minimize your Ryzen controller to the tray instead of the taskbar. You can reapply the settings. Yeah, basically general stuff there, so pretty cool stuff. And there is the releases, so you can go to the latest version, which is hosted on gitlab.com. You can download source files, etc., etc. So anyway, that is the uh, the kind of overall look of the system. So we're gonna to concentrate today on CPU. Now, one thing you should really do before you do any of this is obviously make a backup because uh, potentially you could mess things up and not be able to get back into Windows, etc. So do back up your system. And also, I should say, complete disclaimer, obviously this program can override your system settings and potentially could cause damage. So obviously, yeah, if you do that, it's, uh, basically on you. So something to do down here, so go into your uh, power settings. So you actually choose your battery and go into power mode. When it's plugged in, set to best performance. So this will kind of unlock as much as it possibly can. Make sure when you're doing this, 
or when you're testing it, do it with the actual mains plug powered and turned on, all that kind of stuff. Do it on battery, it doesn't work quite as well. It will work, but it's just not really intended to be done on battery. It's more designed for getting the most power out of it. So for our particular system, so as a default, you'll see all of these settings here will have slightly different settings or numbers. So I've gone ahead and the temperature limit was originally 85, even though we were actually hitting 88 degrees or more. So I just moved that slider up to 90. That's where I feel comfortable. Obviously do it to wherever you feel comfortable. The CPU TDP, and obviously depending on your particular CPU, yours may differ. As default, mine is set to 25, 25 watts that is on this particular system. On a lot of Ryzen based systems, there'll be an option between 15 and 25. You can obviously make this go a little bit higher. So if we go up to like 28 is where I felt comfortable doing it. But obviously, depending on your particular system, you can move the slider and do what you want. You will be limited by the motherboard anyway, what it can physically do. So 28 is what I changed mine to, just three watts extra. Long boost duration. Generally, this is gonna be set to around about 900, I think it is as default, so I just put it all the way up to the end of the slider, so long boost duration is going to basically boost for as long as it possibly can. Then we've got the long boost TDP, now I've actually set that as being one watt less than the CPU TDP, and the reason behind that is because the CPU TDP really is kind of for single or dual core high intensity loads, but when you're doing a long boost, if you're using all cores, then probably reducing that might help, almost like under vaulting. So again, you can play with these settings to see what works for you in your particular setup. This laptop has a shockingly bad cooling situation on it, so uh, there's not really a great deal we can do too much. You also got the option here for short boost duration. You can change that if you want to, and your short boost TDP. So short boost we've got set to 10 watts. If you leave these unchecked, it will just go to the system defaults. So you don't have to do all of them. If you wanted to, you could just disable all of these and literally just set your temperature limit to 90 degrees up from what it is normally. Or maybe if you want to, you can set it to 95 or whatever, whatever you feel comfortable with. Or if you're actually trying to undervolt or run your system at a lower temperature, obviously you can reduce this right down, put it down to 50 degrees and it will thermally throttle the processor so you get better battery life and obviously much better temperatures. Anyway. So I'm gonna stick that back to uh, 90, which is what I had mine originally. You can, if you want to, like I said, you can just use your presets. So we'll enable CPU TDP, long boost duration, and the long boost TDP. We'll leave the short boost and short boost TDP as they are. When you're done, when you're happy, click on apply. Or if you want to, you can create a preset based on your existing settings. So you can go in here and do 5500U and uh, call that YT because we created this whilst making a YouTube video. Click OK and you get a message there saying it's being created, so that's awesome. So now if we want to, we go into presets, we've got two there. So we've got our original 5500U and we've also got our 5500U YouTube. And it actually tells you what the settings are, basically based on the command line. So again, if you want to, you can delete those, do whatever you want to do. Now where it actually does get quite interesting is when we look at the results. So some of the results I've done, so this is before and after, so our before results for CPU Z, we had 492 for our single core and 3357.7 for our multi-core, which was uh, actually not too bad, but with our settings applied after CPU Z hit 494, so a very small difference there on the single core, but the multi-core actually got 3560 which is a pretty decent improvement. So that's pretty good. So looking at Cinebench, we'll see how Cinebench does. So Cinebench R23, standard settings. We've got a single core result of 1031, or 1031, and a multi-core of 6710. With the modifications applied, our single core actually got a little bit better. So 1101, and the multi-core, very slight improvement, 6733. And all this is actually still at the same temperatures, so that's awesome. Uh, where it actually got very good, indeed, was in Time Spy. So Time Spy actually did benefit greatly from this. So Time Spy before, we had a Time Spy score of 1072, and that was from 971 points for the GPU and 2639 points for the CPU. When we actually applied the settings of our kind of overclock going on here, or different TDP, 
Time Spy scored 1,342 points, and our GPU now went up to 1186, and bizarrely the CPU rocketed ahead at 5,318, so massive improvement in Time Spy. That worked out really, really well. Things tailed off a little bit towards the end, so PC Mark 10, we had 4,992, and after we applied the settings, we got a very, very modest improvement at 5,095 points. So overall, it's actually not too bad at all. Basically, we're within pretty much the same thermal envelope. Uh, the temperatures actually went up, I think it's like one degree. So potentially there's a little bit more room there. We're still getting very close to that 90 degrees mark, and that is just with it on the desk here. There's no additional airflow, which certainly if you want to get the most out of it and really overclock the system or increase the voltages and wattages, etc., then ideally some sort of monitor stand uh, with some airflow underneath so you can raise it up a little bit just to get a little bit more airflow forced into the cooling situation, which would definitely be helpful with this particular model. So overall, is it actually worth doing? I'll be honest with you, probably not. In some instances, obviously, if you are using your laptop and you're using it as a gaming laptop, you have no other options but to use your laptop for gaming, then actually squeezing a little bit more performance out of it, getting maybe a 5-10% increase in performance, is going to be the difference between some games being playable and some not, especially on these integrated APUs. And of course, if you wanted to, you can go back into Voice Controller and go into the GPU side of things, and you can configure things individually there, so you can increase frequencies, all that kind of good stuff. That is entirely up to you. Uh, you can spend ages configuring games and tweaking it to get more performance. And actually some people have had some really good results there, but at the moment I'm concentrating more on the CPU side of things, just to see if we can leverage a little bit more performance out of it. So anyway, I think that's gonna pretty much wrap things up. If you wanna try this out for yourself on your own laptop, ideally, as long as it is a AMD APU, then you should be absolutely fine. There is word on the street that potentially they will be doing a version for Intel as well shortly, so do keep an eye out for that. If you wanna find out more about Ryzen controller, Links will be in the video description, and uh, obviously they've also got a Discord, so if you have any issues or comments or questions, then obviously you can ask me if you want to, but ideally probably best off reaching out to them directly. So there we go, that's been Ryzen Controller on my HP 245G8 model laptop. Hopefully this video has been useful. If it has, smash the like button. If you want to see more content like this, then hit the subscribe button and the channel notification, and you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.